A sower went forth to sow, and it came to pass that some seed was devoured by birds. No birds in RVs. Other seed fell upon rocky places. No rocks in RVs either. Still other seed fell upon good ground, yielding some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some a hundredfold. anyway. <laughs> the parable of the sower has to do with planting seeds and not using a needle and thread honey. So put away your handwork girls and let's show our friends how we grow food, eat healthy, and save money in our RV. Okay, let's do it. You have to start with good soil and we use organic cocoa core as our base. It's also great for our composting toilet. Hey mom, let's show them how it expands in the water. For most applications, like making a pot of soil or growing a flat of wheatgrass, we pre-measure four ounce bags of the cocoa core, mix it with three cups of water, and it comes out perfect. And for our composting toilet, we use one pound of cocoa core mixed with one quart of water, and it's perfect. It goes into gallon Ziploc bags until we're ready to use it. This step is really fun for the kids, too. makes about a bag and a third and we find that with our family we need about two full bags for our composting toilet which lasts about a week. You might be wondering where we grow our plants. We went to Home Depot, we found these two racks, we attached them together and we hung them under our skylight. Check it out! We can raise or lower it depending on how high we want it because it's attached to carabiners. We do have to take it down when we're traveling though. So we unattach the carabiners, we put the rack on the bed, and all the plants, they travel in the shower. We just got some brand new organic herbs at Trader Joe's yesterday. They were only a couple bucks each. All right, kiddos, we're gonna pot up some plants here. Okay. These herbs we've had all through the winter, which is so amazing. We've had fresh basil and fresh rosemary all winter long. And this little rosemary plant started out as our Christmas tree. We've had it since November, and we've loved it. And we're gonna plant it outside. We're gonna leave it here in Texas at the campground where we're at so other people can enjoy it. So we're gonna pot these up so that they last longer. So which one do you guys wanna do first? This one. Make a choice together, please. The basil. This one. This one. That this one. one. Basil. Ha! Wins. So we're gonna get organic potting soil, fill our pot about a third of the way, very carefully. Whoa, what's going on guys? Hey, how are you? Good. Cool, we just potted up some plants from Trader Joe's. We're about to start our spiritual lesson. Wanna join us? Absolutely. So in order to get from this to this, you just need a few simple things. You start with this amazing product here. It's called Sea Crop. I don't get any benefit from this company. I'm just sharing this with you because this is an awesome product. You'll find it available through Ambrosia Technologies. The founder of this company, Arthur Zeigler, he wrote a book called Seawater Concentrate for Abundant Agriculture. The research behind this is phenomenal. It started with a guy named Maynard Murray about a century ago who discovered that large sea mammals didn't have any heart disease and he wondered why. His hypothesis was that they were bathed in ocean water minerals all the time. Fast forward a century, Dr. Zeigler figured out a way to concentrate ocean water, but he was able to remove the salt. And he made this product. It says do not drink, but <sighs> gotta get my minerals somehow. It is fiery. So why do we use all these ocean water minerals when we germinate the seeds? because we impregnate the seeds with every mineral the body needs. And then we grow it into the superstructure of the wheatgrass. It is about the most healthy thing that you can put in your body on this planet. Don't take my word for it, try it out yourself. If you've ever been to the health food store and you've got a shot of wheatgrass, what's it taste like? It tastes like you just lick the underside of the lawnmower, right? Not this, this is sweet. 
almost like candy. The children say it's too sweet. So anyway, this is the way we do it. I'll show you. So we germinate the seeds. We soak them in water with a tablespoon of seed crop in a quart. And then after 24 hours, we rinse them. And then we wait another day until they're just starting to sprout. They're almost there right now. Then we inflate some cocoa core into one of these bedding trays, 12 by 12. And we keep them moist using a mister and a little bit more seed crop. Once the wheatgrass gets to the mature state, usually in about seven to nine days, you can tell it starts to get white on the bottom. It's really green on the top. It's about six inches long. At that point, we begin the harvest. You can pick one of these little babies up on Amazon. This is stainless steel. Really good juicing device specifically for wheatgrass. And then we do this. this nifty sprouting tray. It's nice because it's compact and we can just store it in the corner. When we're driving it, it travels in the sink or in the shower with our other plants and it's just wonderful. These are broccoli sprouts that we started four or five days ago. They're ready so I'm going to store them in the fridge until they're ready to eat. Look at that. You pull it up and the roots are just beautiful. Here's a different blend that somebody already helped themselves to. Uh, that would be the cameraman. <laughs> and then here's ones that I started yesterday. Broccoli and chia. All right, so I've rinsed out my two trays. They're wet, which I like because it makes the seeds stick a little bit better. This is a five-part salad mix that we found at National Grocers. And then I just start sprinkling the seeds in. And you kind of have to play with it to figure out how many you want in there. That looks about good to me. Next is broccoli sprouts. We've been using this bag, one pound bag of broccoli sprouts for over a year. They're awesome. Kind of bounce around a lot and spread themselves out pretty nicely. So then I spray them down with our sea crop water mixture and we spray them down twice a day. In the instructions, they talk about dripping through this pan but I found that my sprouts got moldy. Another healthy and money-saving thing that we do is we brew kombucha. It's great because kombucha is expensive in the store. Plus, we don't have to buy soda or bubble water because it's a healthy probiotic drink that all of our family loves. And we get to flavor it with whatever fruit is in season. Picks up a little room in the RV, but it's definitely worth it. Come take a look. And if you're interested in how I do that, leave a comment in the comments below and I'll make a video for you guys. I might even send you my recipe. We've mentioned water several times in this video and it's so the cleaner our water and the more minerals it contains, the healthier we can be. If you're interested in learning about the most epic water system in an RV, please leave a comment because we would love to do a video on our water system and show as many people possible that you can actually drink water right out of streams, creeks, lakes. We've done it many times. Our water comes out pristine, pure. Wow. So if the sower went forth to sow, what, what is he trying to sow? He's trying to sow happiness. If the sower was trying to sow happiness, why would some happiness get trampled underfoot? Why would some happiness spring up and then fall away? Why would some happiness yield 30, 60, or 100 fold? Why? Because people take things different ways. Ah, lovely child. So if the sower is a teacher, what would the teacher be trying to teach? Anella, what would a teacher try to get to grow in his or her students? Wisdom? How could wisdom be trampled underfoot, Ava? Maybe if people already think they have wisdom, or they think the wisdom they are trying to teach about is wrong, then they could um, trample it. Yeah, or ignore it. Excellent. Ignore it. Girls, what is the central meaning of this parable? When you put, like, wisdom out there, yeah. people can take it or experience it different ways. So. When you go about in your life and you live your spiritual truth, 
people can see it or not. But the important thing is, is that you put it out there. Because every once in a while, a truth that you share. 30, 60, 100 folds. And that's the way we create peace on earth by multiplying the truth, beauty, and goodness in our own lives and sharing it with those around us. Yes. And what does the parable mean to you? Please tell us in the comments.